upcoming India's landmark mega project, the country's first bullet train. The Indian city of Surat is known for its diamond industry, where gems are cut and polished on their way to the international jewelry market. But soon it will be known for something else. If all goes according to plan, Surat will also soon be known as a midway point on India's first bullet train line. Around the clock, hundreds of workers are toiling in the city in the western state of Gujarat. Their mission is to ensure that construction is completed before the project, based on Japan's Shinkansen and built with Japanese assistance, is due for its first trial run, which the Indian side expects in 2026. The Maiden Project Surat will be one of 12 stops along a 508-kilometer line connecting Mumbai, the commercial hub in the state of Maharashtra, with Ahmedabad in Gujarat, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's home state. The train will hit speeds of up to 320 kilometers, cutting the train travel time between the cities to under three hours for more than six at present. The ambitious endeavor has had its twists and turns, from political resistance to COVID-19 delays, and will miss the initially scheduled completion date at the end of 2023. But the renewed momentum is a symbol of an India-Japan relationship that is also gathering pace. The first time that the high-speed train project was mentioned was in 2009. The idea was proposed by the former railway minister, Mamata Banjuri, in the project named Vision 2020. In 2013, the bullet train route Mumbai to Ahmedabad project was conceived by the former Prime Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh. This was the year when India and Japan signed an MOU and undertook joint feasibility to study this route. The project took shape in 2017 when the foundation stone of the first Indian bullet train was laid by Prime Minister Narendra Modi and former Japanese President Shinzo Abe. The construction process. Construction of the first reinforced concrete track bed for the Mumbai Ahmedabad bullet train project started in Surat on August 31st this year. The National High Speed Rail Corridor Limited track system is the same as that of the Japanese Shinkansen bullet train. The J Slab ballastless track system is being used for the first time in India, the Ministry of Railways stated. Contracts for the track works in the entire Gujarat section of the project have been awarded, and material procurement for track works is currently at an advanced stage. Over 14,000 metric tons of rails and 50 molds for casting track slabs have already been received from Japan, the Indian Railway spokesperson said. The bullet train track rests on reinforced concrete anchors, suitable for running trains at a high speed of 320 kilometers per hour. The RC anchors are provided to avoid any longitudinal and lateral restraint to the track slab. The size of the RC anchor is 520 millimeters in diameter and the height is 260 millimeters. These are constructed at a distance of approximately five meters center to center. In RC anchor, reference pin is installed for achieving desired alignment, both horizontal and vertical, suitable for train operation at 320 kilometers per hour, a spokesperson of the Indian Railway Ministry explained. The track system comprises a precast track slab over which fastening devices and rails are fitted. This slab rests on the reinforced concrete track bed, which is a thickness of approximately 300 millimeters and is constructed at the site for individual up and down track lines on a viaduct top. The width of the reinforced concrete track bed is 2,420 millimeters. Track slabs will be manufactured in dedicated factories, and two such factories have already been set up. These factories are equipped with the most sophisticated and state-of-the-art technologies and the infrastructure to produce precise slabs for high-speed rail track construction, the spokesperson further said. Special construction machinery, including the rail feeder car, the slab lane car, and the cement asphalt mortar lane car, will be deployed for the track works. To understand the methodology of execution of work related to track lane, extensive training and certification for Indian contractors' personnel is being organized with the Japan Railway Technical Services as the training and certification agency, the Indian spokesperson said. The high-speed rail line is designed to incorporate a total of 12 stations. Proposed stations include those in Mumbai, Thane, Virar, Boisar, Vapi, Bilamora, Surat, Baruk, Vadarada, Anand, Nadied, Amenadad, and Sabarmati. To facilitate seamless transfers with the Indian Railways network, the high-speed rail stations will be strategically constructed either above or adjacent to existing railway stations. However, this approach towards construction is complex, and that's what makes it quite difficult to achieve. The Anand HSR station, situated 600 meters away from Uttarsanda railway station, will feature a white exterior and interior design, 
symbolizing the district's renowned milk and white revolution. The station will comprise a dual-sided platform, a waiting area, and a business lounge at the concourse level. Additionally, amenities such as a nursery and shops will be available. The upcoming stations will offer a range of amenities, including ticketing and waiting areas, a business class lounge, a nursery, restrooms, smoking rooms, information kiosks, incidental retail centers, and a public information and announcement system. The Surat High-Speed Rail Station became the first station to complete the construction of both the concourse and rail level slab. As reported by the National High-Speed Rail Corporation Limited, the Surat HSR station boasts a 450-meter-long concourse and a corresponding 450-meter-long rail level. The station's design is characterized by a diamond theme, extending to both the facade and interiors. The aerial perspective of the structure will mirror the shape of a diamond. Featuring four platforms, the concourse floor will encompass essential facilities, such as waiting areas, a business lounge, restrooms, a nursery, shops, kiosks, ticketing counters, and customer care centers. On the ground floor, there will be provisions for parking, pick and drop bays, pedestrian plazas, security checks, lifts, escalators, and travelators. The challenges. First and foremost, there are social challenges affecting the project. Construction of high-speed railways requires a lot of initial investment, which many would question as an ineffective way of investing quite a large sum of money. Indian high-speed rail project is proposed between Mumbai and Ahmedabad, which is 510 kilometers. MOU was signed between India and Japan to carry out a joint study on the proposed project. High-speed railways, along with all other benefits, can bring a lot of opportunities and can majorly impact a country's economy. Mumbai Ahmedabad, which is the economic hub of India, can benefit hugely from the proposed HSR project between the two cities. A major social challenge in the construction of speed railways in India is acquiring the land for the construction of the transport corridor. The project was proposed in the 2009-2010 railway budget, and the land survey and land acquisition started in 2017. The project's construction was to be started in 2020 and completed by 2023, but was pushed back due to problems in acquiring the land. Then, there are issues related to route design. Detailed alignment choice is one of the major concerns, especially when it is over ground, keeping in view land acquisition challenges versus providing access to the population along the corridor. If the alignment goes closer to urban growth areas to provide access, there would be issues of land acquisition pulling down buildings, and the possibility of destroying heritage structures, among other challenges. Additionally, the location of stations is a crucial issue to be addressed. Various questions relating to whether the station should be in the city center connecting existing railway stations, in an adjacent station, or on the periphery of an urban node need to be answered judiciously. The trade-offs are providing better access and connectivity versus costs due to land and structures. From a long-term point of view, being in the periphery of an urban node, apart from reducing costs, could help generate urban growth around the station and even shift the center of gravity of the urban area. In the short run, however, traffic ramp up will take time. This would be required to be mitigated through excellent feeder services. The specific location of the terminal station in Mumbai is still courting controversies. The Maharashtra government does not seem willing to give land in a major commercial growth node as requested. Instead, the state government is suggesting that the station could be located on the land that belongs to the railways. This could have implications for the catchment at the Mumbai end. Then there is the issue of the number of stations. In general, for this entire project, there would be a demand for more stations. While this will increase the catchment, it could reduce the average speed due to a higher number of stops. One way around this would be to have different service categories, like fast, that is, stopping at all stations, and super fast, only in major cities. It should be noted that the bigger catchment will be from the smaller cities that may not have access to airports. For example, while an Ahmedabad Mumbai passenger may still consider air a viable option, the high-speed train is a great boon for the Anand Mumbai or Ahmedabad Vapi passenger. Having stations with connectivity to airports, like at Ahmedabad, Vadodara, and Mumbai, will increase the catchment of long-distance air passengers who could then connect to the cities in this corridor and vice versa. The Benefits 
After the metro train projects, the bullet train project is considered a second transport revolution, and India is now poised to enjoy the benefits once this project is up and running. First, there is the global experience. The high-speed rail has an economic multiplier effect. Since the introduction of the first Shinkansen in Japan in 1964, high-speed trains have proven to be an undeniable technological, commercial, and popular success. Many countries like the UK, France, Germany, Spain, China, and most recently the US have adopted the technology. In India, trains have played a significant role in shaping the growth of the domestic economy since the late 1800s. Currently, Indian Railways operates one of the largest rail networks in the world, transporting more than 22 million passengers a day and moving more than 1.2 billion tons of goods every year. The high-speed rail network, once in place, is expected to further catalyze India's economic growth and act as a stimulus for the development of satellite towns. And it goes without saying that there will be an improvement in India's GDP thanks to this project. According to a study conducted by the London School of Economics and Political Science, and the University of Hamburg in 2008, cities that are connected to high-speed railway systems tend to witness a rise in their gross domestic product by at least 2.7 percentage points compared to their neighbors that do not have the stations. The reason for the differential was improved market access with faster and more efficient commuting. Technological revolution is another advantage the project will bring to India. The transport corridor will pass via Thane Creek in Mumbai, which is a protected sanctuary housing mangroves and a population of flamingos. In order to avoid disturbing this habitat, the rail corridor has been proposed to traverse through a 21-kilometer tunnel, of which 7 kilometers will be under the sea. Several new technologies are expected to be used for the first time in India to surmount this construction challenge. Similarly, light detection and ranging, better known as LiDAR technology, will also be deployed for the first time in a railway project in India. The project is also expected to create a lot of employment opportunities, increase economic activity, boost productivity, and improve mobility. The high-speed rail development overall will bring positive results for those involved in the process directly or indirectly. Right from project beneficiaries to those who will be providing construction or any other kind of support, improved standards of living await on the upside. Improvement and better opportunities for livelihood are at the center of the project's planning. Therefore, one can expect a more efficient economy going forward for those who have given up their personal land for the project and upliftment from their previous lifestyle beckons. With more money flowing into the family, they can provide better education to their children and increase their prospects of a prosperous life ahead. Will this be the first one of India's mega projects to come? Only time will tell. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to subscribe to our channel for more of such amazing content. Give us a like, share the video, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell for timely updates of our latest uploads. And that's it from us today. Until next time, thank you for watching.